in case. Um, one second. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I was telling you, Barry, that we have here um, Catalina, who you already met, mm -hmm. um, and we also have Brent, who is our creative director. Yeah. Hi, Brent. Um, Thank you for so, your time. So we um, are going to be doing this interview, but first, um, Brent, do you think that this placement is fine, like how he looks? Yeah, the, the the main thing I, I mean the placement's great. I mean the backdrop's really nice. That it's it it is very Costa Rica, which is great. <laughs> um, I was just the, I think the lighting is. I don't know if there's any other. Is there a, a light on you right now, or is there that all two. just natural light? There are two. There's right? the best we can do. Okay, uh, um, it's just one one side of your face is more lit than the other. Yeah, that's my working that's okay. uh, lamp for the lathe. Okay. Uh, not the end of the world. That's fine. Was, that's the only thing I was noticing. I mean, I love like looking in the background and seeing the leaves blow and everything's great. So, um, okay. If you could see the other the side, it's a very typical Escazú uh, Costa Rican house with the blue trim on the bottom. <laughs> nice. Uh, you're, you're, you're lucky. It looks great. Thank you. Well, now that I have you all here, uh, we do have a, uh, online presence website and we ship. So keep that in mind. I did check it out before this interview. Thank you. Good. Great. Okay. So Barry, um, before we start the interview, um, I sent you yesterday a document that had the questions and you have that perfect. And at the end of that, there's a consent letter that we would like you to um, recite. If you don't have it with you, I can send it. No, nope, that didn't print. Okay, I'll send it to you. No, no worries. One second. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good dog. Oye los pericos. Yeah, we love it. We love the, all the sounds of the birds and everything. You want me to type it in the chat? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking for it. Is it just that I can't find it? Do you have it? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Kat. Okay, so Catalina just sent it in the chat. If you can open that and read the, the consent. Okay, at the end? Um, if you could no. start with that and then we could jump into the questions. Mm -hmm. You want me to do it now? Yeah. Okay. Can I see it? What are you looking for? She just sent a consent to form us just to read. Okay, you're gonna have to get that on your email, which is presumably no, it's, your cell it, phone. it's on the chat. It's on the chat in the on the Zoom. Oh yes, I'll get the chat open. Oh, uh, you, you yeah. disconnected the light. I oh. Oh, it's on. I don't understand that. I think the power might have gotten out there for a second. No, you stepped on it. It's fine. Okay. Um, the hmm. chat is. Here? Yeah. And here's the uh, okay. 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 Without expectation of, uh, it went out again. Okay. Without expectation of compensation now or in the future, I full name Barry Bizant hereby give my consent to MMRY Global and Costa Rican Tourism Board to use my video and image, um, and and or any interview statements for me in its publications, advertising, or other media activities. Con mucho gusto. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Okay, so 
Um, let's start by you stating your name. Um, if you could, oh, the light went off yeah. again. Yeah, give me one second. I'm trying to figure out why it went off. I'm sorry. That's when you walk by it. Take now it's on. Okay, this connection is loose. Yeah, so just don't step on it. Uh, all right. Um, okay. Ready? Ready. Perfect. Okay. Um, so could you please state your name and the company you work for? Uh, hello. Or that you own? Hello, I'm Barry Bizans, uh, and I'm the owner in uh, Bizans Woodworks, a small uh, craft operation here in Costa Rica. Great. Um, and how long have you been doing this? Um, I think since 1974, in prehistory. <laughs> Great. Um, and who taught you about woodwork and everything that you know about that? Okay, well, time helps. Experience helps. Um, there was a, uh, another expat here who was self-taught, and he showed me uh, sanding and finishing. And then I learned joinery uh, on my own using Fine work, Woodworking Magazine. I just pour through that thing and find new techniques and projects, and um, every week try something new. And I had a policy of only using one new technique uh, per project, no more than two. So I would have a chance of uh, coming through uh, sane. Great. Um, and how does this um, trade reflect what Costa Rica stands for? Well, to me, it's a matter of natural beauty. So uh, uh, I have no uh, design training. I can't draw. I have to compose things uh, with physical objects. Um, but I've always been drawn to natural beauty and trying to reflect that uh, in the work, They're keeping it simple uh, and letting the, the wood stand out uh, as a, the principal element. Great. Um, and we would like to know, um, how does Costa Rica influence your work? Well, I think I just answered that. It's a sustainable oh. ethic, uh, natural beauty. Um, when I started out, or was going to start out, I asked uh, the leading tropical ecologist of the world, the founder, the co-founder of the Tropical Science Center, Dr. Joe Tosi, and I said, uh, Joe, is this a good idea, or should I not be working in, in wood? And he said, you'll probably do more good than harm. And uh, he was a lifelong client, and we set up several nurseries, one down on the coast and one here, uh, free nurseries to give away uh, hardwood trees that were scarce, like Cocobolo, thousands of them. Great. Um, and another question that we had, um, do you, use local wood um, to create your arts craft? Well, for a long time, yes. And then there were more uh, restrictions on uh, wood harvesting in Costa Rica. Uh, and for some years I was buying mostly from Nicaraguan truckers. But uh, we've gotten heavily into reforestation over the last 30 years, my wife and I, and learned a great deal more about uh, uh, trees. and started using more local timbers. If something falls down, I have a chance of knowing what it is or whether it's of any use. And right here in the neighborhood, uh, there is a lovely guacamole tree. Uh, we harvested that people needed to get rid of it. Another friend recently had some Antisco trees. We didn't know what they were. They were just dead trees, and he asked me if I'd cut them for him. I did, and it was a fabulous wood. I'd only seen once before that has pinks and greens in it. And I know of no other timber that got those colors. Now we finally have got two or three of them on our 12-acre farm up the hill. I love this connection to sustainability and obviously things that are very important in, in Costa Rica. I'm curious, and that, that story was, was a great uh, example of that. I'm, I'm curious now if, if some of this you know, found wood or, or some of the things that, you know, that have happened via your uh, reforestation efforts or any of that has influenced, you know, the kind of, even the kind of things that you're making or if they, you know, obviously you've, you know, grown and evolved over time in, in what you do and what, and what you create. I'm just curious, like, this is a really neat twist to, well, it's uh, a, it's a feedback the thing between uh, me and the trees. Um, one example is uh, truckers used to bring me uh, uh, truckloads of uh, coca bolo and they cut the branches and throw them on top and then we bargain hard for the value, value of the wood and they throw in the branches so pretty soon they had a large and growing pile of uh, coca bolo branches with maybe um, three to six inches of hardwood 
and I didn't have much use for them beyond making chopsticks, but there's a limit to how many chopsticks I could sell. So eventually I figured out a way of uh, making an interesting bowl uh, using these branches that, and turning it thick, letting it uh, partially rot and get the uh, fungus markings on it, and then turning simple uh, bowls um, out of these branches. Um, it wasn't long before the wood suppliers noticed I was making money off these things, and they started charging me for the branches too. Then uh, I might have fallen trees, and sometimes there'd be uh, uh, holes or defects in the wood, and I learned how to use those. Um, one of my long-term workers has been with me uh, over 35 years. He's a grandfather and started as a 15-year-old. Um, we'll take the irregular pieces of uh, branches and deformed wood and sell them as natural sculptures, uh, generally uh, vaguely erotic. Okay, um, and now that you've talked to us about some of like the hurdles that you've had um, with getting the wood and, and everything related to that, um, what other hurdles you have to have you had to overcome um, during your time working um, with woodwork and doing this art craft? Well, dealing with the bureaucracy uh, uh, was a major irritant. Uh, I started out working alone. Every time I had to go downtown to do some tramite, uh, um, paperwork, uh, um, it really irritated me to be taken away from my work. Um, some years ago, we got a messenger, and I bless him every day. It makes life much easier. <laughs> um, and what are your hopes and goals um, for your occupation? Um, that the tradition continue. That uh, fine woodworking should not die from this country. It's uh, been a hard hurdle. My folks are sociologists, I should say. They wrote three books on Costa Rica, so I tend to think like that. Uh, there is a higher tradition of craftsmanship in Nicaragua, Guatemala, and Mexico because they're all, all, all those richer countries and more of a wealthy upper class to uh, uh, employ artisans. And that fell into disuse here. I grew up thinking that being a, a craftsman it, uh, was a big deal. Was, the girls thought it was great. Um, but uh, it took some time to uh, catch on here. Fortunately, there was a, a a craft-loving uh, foreign minister seven years ago, uh, Bernard Niehaus, and he liked my work, and he started uh, giving uh, my work as state gifts uh, for foreign presidents and prime ministers. And at this point, I've got the longest resume of uh, uh, heads of state of anyone I can think of, because they've already been given painted ox carts. <laughs> nice. That's amazing. Do you work alone, or do you have uh, a team under you, or do you employ, um, you know, local uh, people who want to learn the crafts more? I, I used to work alone, um, but the business got a little better, and I decided to start selling to stores, and uh, so I started hiring people, and some of them are still with me. They're, I've been the only job I've ever had. Um, my wife had the uh, bright idea some years ago of giving a watch to everyone who had been with us eight years. And we had to go to Golfito and buy 12 watches at that point. Uh, <laughs> this is, has slowed down, but now we only have uh, four people in the shop. Um, I've always been the bowl turner and the designer. Um, and I, I quit making the furniture myself years ago because everyone I hired did it better. I hired one fellow um, who said he was a cabinet maker and I showed him how to make dovetails. I said, here are three different methods to make dovetails. Do whatever you like, just have the joints be tight and hit set him to making a couple blanket chests. Every joint he made was perfect. He's never had to redo one. They've always been good. And then after he'd been here some months, he said he wasn't really a cabinet maker. He was a finished carpenter. I said, no, nope, now you're a cabinet maker. And he's <laughs> still the senior uh, foreman at the shop. I just design and make the bowls. Great. Um, and do, due to the situation that we are at now with the coronavirus, have you had to reinvent your business or what have you done to to stay afloat in this situation? Well, the present, we have no tourism coming into the country at all. So I've got three people on half time and, and uh, three people uh, suspended for three months until we see if uh, that's going to get better. Okay. Um, then, and I, now we want to know a little bit more about um, the tourism 
Um, so why is it important for you to share your trade with visitors in Costa Rica, that visitors to Costa Rica? Well, I like what I'm doing and we do the best we can. And I want to uh, show it to people. Uh, the shop itself is designed uh, like a traditional uh, Escazú uh, uh, house with thick walls and blue trim and tile roof. And we've planted a botanical garden and coffee trees offer a free tour of the garden and the shop. Um, I'd like to show it off. And we're very happy to deal with uh, uh, apprentices, anyone that wants uh, to learn, either online or, or here. I've had a number of people come through the place and spend anywhere from a few days to a few months. Um, and that's been exciting. So, the tradition has to continue. So you, um, when you have vis visitors and tourists coming over, um, what do you think they find surprising about your work? Uh, the level of finish, probably. We're pretty fanatic about that. When wood was cheaper, I was spending more on sandpaper than I was on wood. Okay. Um, and now we want to learn more a little um, about you. So, um, how long have you and your family been in Costa Rica? Well, one way of putting it is off and on since 1942. Um, my parents came down here on their honeymoon to find a place that hadn't been written about to uh, um, start his academic career. So, um, they, he taught at the university, and my mother taught at the Escuela Normal de Heredia, and taught English. Um, and they interviewed and gathered material for their first book. And then we went back to Detroit, and I grew up mainly in Michigan and Minnesota, two places with snow. Anyway, um, what was the question again? How long you and your family oh, have been in Costa Rica? Off and on since 1942. And then uh, I came down with my second wife and uh, second child and my parents full-time in 1973. Um, I became Costa Rican, so did my parents. We had two of us, were, uh, the next generation were born here. So we have a lot of Ticos in the family. And do they all still live there? No. I've got one son, a professor in Vancouver, another one a stone, a very good stonemason in Oregon. And my daughter's a, a chaplain at hospices and hospitals in the, upstate New York. Okay, great. They're close to us. <laughs> um, the, are you the only one then in your family who kind of continued with this, um, you know, this type of work, or is there anybody else that has kind of followed your your, your same path? Well, uh, my younger son became a, a professor of psychology and uh, research psychology, and he's pretty far advanced in his field. But uh, he went and got himself a full size. Uh, uh, workshop for his uh, Vancouver apartment and he is and his son make fine furniture and he's uh, something of a quality snob as was his father before him and my oldest boy is a quality stonemason in, in Talent, Oregon and other stonemasons take the work to him because he just doesn't quit. He does really bang up jobs. Did they uh... I mean, was it partly following, you know, school or professional opportunity that they decided to uh, leave Costa Rica? And have, has there been any talk about uh, plans to come back? Or I'm just I'm putting myself in your position, watching you know my kids <laughs> go away and, and back to the country you came from. And just curious that that kind of relationship between North America and Costa Rica. Please. Well, they all love Costa Rica, uh, but my second wife took uh, the two youngest kids. Uh, back to Michigan with her, and uh, so they'd come down uh, every year, and increasingly more as they became adults. Uh, and my oldest boy, my ex-wife, uh, sent him to live with me, and I've raised him here. He went all the way through uh, uh, 12 years of school here, and moved up to the U.S. for college and, uh, and work. And he, he and his uh, wife are moving back down here in August. They're going to share a house with us and uh, help with the uh, Managing properties. Great. Um, so now to talk a little bit about Costa Rica. Um, what do you think make Costa Rica unique? Okay. Well, I'm pretty well qualified to answer that with the, the three books of my parents. 
Um, the pacifism of Costa Rica, the, the no army business, the uh, dedication to education, uh, social justice, medical care, um, uh, aid for the poor. This is uh, something that's pretty rare in uh, Latin America. I, I think you have to go to Uruguay to find something uh, as dedicated. It, and in, in this time of uh, pandemic, it's a great thing to have uh, because the company's got, the country's got a great deal of social cohesion um, and an honest president and ministers, um, good public health system. It's a wonderful place to be. Okay. Um, and what? Yeah. I got a motorcycle going by. Okay, he stopped. Okay. Um, yeah, we, um, Brent said that we all agree with that. Um, <laughs> so, um, what does sustainability mean to you? What is what? Sustainability means oh, to you. Um, in terms of woodwork, it's uh, don't make stuff that's going to be discarded. I've had people uh, ask me repeatedly to make uh, wooden cell phone cases, uh, but, but they keep changing the sizes. I made uh, uh, wall cases that look sort of like an English uh, dart cupboard uh, for putting in cassettes. And the first person to look at it said, do you make it for CDs? I, didn't even, I thought a CD was a certificate, certificate of deposit. And so I said, the hell with that. I'm not going to make objects for things that keep on changing. Even a Kleenex holder. You know, the Kleenex boxes are rather ugly, and having a nice wooden box to uh, cover it is great. But damn company keeps, ch excuse me, the company keeps changing the uh, sizes. Well, you bring up something interesting. Do you find that you're creating uh, things based on, you know, the demand and need of people right now, or what's well, trending? Like, how do you continue to come up with something new all the time? Um, Well, I'm composing at the lathe. Um, I've built up a vocabulary for dealing with uh, recurring uh, uh, types of wood and, uh, and grain. Um, but each one is different. Sometimes I'll get an order for 30 or 40 bowls for a, um, you know, a group convention coming here or something. And I'll, I always have to negotiate. They're not all going to be the same. That's the charm of it. Live with it. Okay, um, and then we have two more questions. Um, what does Pura Vida mean to you? Well, I find it amusing because it was originally used in a uh, Mexican movie from the 1940s, which was popular here, and that's where the expression came from. And I'm finding more and more Costa Ricans are aware of that and handle it very well. Um, well, it translates as pure life, but uh, uh, if it were Australian, it'd be, no worries, mate. Um, Take it easy, tranquilo, yay. Um, and then last but not least, what would you like to say to individuals that are planning a future trip to Costa Rica? Okay, it's a very good idea. We're close, it's safe, it's healthy. Uh, don't go to the big box hotels. Um, go on the uh, uh, eco tours, the quality of the Nature Guides here has gotten tremendously uh, advanced. And stay at the uh, smaller uh, eco lodges or, or even the hostels if you're on a budget. Um, go to some of the less visited places. Uh, uh, like Monteverde is very nice, but uh, you can drive south in the Pan American Highway to the upper Savegre River and you'll see more macaws and fewer tourists. And there are trout in the streams. I like it. Uh, Cahuita and Puerto Viejo are very interesting towns. Uh, there's a, a touristy uh, sort of uh, down rent place in the upper Pacific course, uh, Playa de Cocal. And the snootier types have always downplayed it, but I went there and I found it charming. Um, and Nicoya Peninsula has got all sorts of uh, a nice small uh, hostels and B&Bs and expat uh, businesses. It's a, and it's, there's so much to see here. There's a river that runs blue. Um, Rio Celeste, um, there's uh, Corcovado Park, which is fantastic, and there are places I still haven't been to, like uh, Wilson Botanical Gardens in San Vito, um, Playa San Culo, um, there's a lot to see. 
Okay. Oh, and that's come see Bizarre's Woodworks. Don't miss Bizarre's Woodworks. We give free oh, tours daily. And if I'm not here, I got two uh, uh, proficient English speakers that know um, the whole story. You offer tours? Yeah, we have free tours of the uh, the garden, the workshop, and the showroom. I called the showroom. I had a French uh, client here, and he called my uh, studio uh, my atelier. So I started calling it that because it sounds so upscale, like a difference between a vase and a vase, you know, about 100 bucks. Um, and then I realized some years later, atelier is French for El Taillère. <laughs> I'm not a very good salesman when people are here because I like to tell jokes. You may have gathered. <laughs> Yeah, we, we're we're laughing over here. <laughs> we're here for it. Um, we're here for it. Yeah. Um, well, that's all of my questions. Um, Catalina and Brent, do you have anything else in mind? Well, let's mention I have a website. Uh, Bizans Woodworks is on Facebook. Bizans.com is the website. And uh, we ship uh, the shipping from Costa Rica. has got much cheaper and easier. And there's no sales tax involved if you ship. Excellent. Good to, Good to know. Thank you, Mary. Sure. Thank, thank you. you so much. Um, so, yeah, that would be all. Um, thank you so much for participating and being part of this documentary that we are working on with the uh, um, Tourism Board of Costa Rica. Um, we now are going to um, be editing everything. So we expect this to go out by maybe end, mid end of June. So you can... Um, follow our page, visit Costa Rica, and <laughs> you'll see yourself there. <laughs> okay, send me a copy if you can. Yeah, of course, we'll, we will do. Okay. Um, yeah. It's Just funny, this year, uh, this is the third uh, big media thing that's happened to me. Um, the BAC bank here uh, had a Christmas party, and the president and a bunch of the executives are clients, so they invited me to give a presentation and mount a gallery in, during their Christmas dinner and give a speech. It was quite the big deal. Um, and then there's something else I'm sworn to secrecy uh, at this point. And, and now you guys. So I'm impressed. Business is getting worse, but uh, hey, I'm world famous in Costa Rica. Good for you. <laughs> I know. We really appreciate your time and and, and, uh, and your story. It's very interesting. And, and uh, like Natalia said, we will uh, be in touch. And, putting these things together soon. Okay, hey, let me uh, get, uh, give you another suggestion. There's an interesting expat here called uh, Harvey Thomas, and he's got something called the Ark Herb Farm in Santa Barbara de Heredia. And this is a well-known place. It's a fabulous botanical garden. He sells plants of all kinds. And he's partnering with the Missouri Botanical Garden, which is one of the three top ones in the world. Uh, they're going to uh, take over the management because he has no heirs. And he's got Great stories, it's a fantastic location, um, and he's one of the more exciting things happening in Costa Rica, the Arc Herb Farm. I can send you to his um, web page and contact information. Also, uh, the Galeria Autentica, I mentioned to you, Chris and Amy Eamon, they are sustainable from as all get out. And he, he taught uh, uh, hospitality and tourism at uh, uh, ICA for many years, so he's well known in the tourism circles in Costa Rica. And his uh, theme stores, uh, two of the Marriott's, are dedicated to sustainability and local craftsmen, and he's doing a great job. So these are happy okay. hunting grounds for you guys. Yeah, please please send that on, that'd be great. Okay, the, the admins already sent that. Okay. Okay, I'll do, we'll do so. Okay. Thank you so much, Barry. We Have a great day. Barry. Live long and prosper. Thanks to you and your birds. <laughs> okay. Virtual hug. Bye. This is not my laptop. Okay, we left. Okay, Sarah. <whistles> no, woman. I am famous. Did all these chickens join here, I think? Uh, yeah, it's a favorable comment. <laughs> <laughs>